it? Try that again, shall we? I said, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Good evening. That's better. That wasn't too hard now, was it, sir? No. I say, madam, you're looking very smart. Dress up for the occasion, I see. Now, this evening, we're going to be taking you back a hundred years. Yes, one hundred years. And we really would like you to get into the spirit of things. Now, back then, mobile phones had not yet been invented. So please switch yours off now, or our faithful following spot operators will have to light you up like a Christmas tree. Yes, just like that. Now, I suppose you're all wondering why I'm dressed like this. You were wondering, weren't you, sir? <laughs> right, let me explain. This is a Pierrot costume. A hundred years ago, Pierrot shows were enormously popular. In fact, they are one of the most popular forms of entertainment. So that's what we have for you tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Felstead's very own Pierrot show! Yay! <laughs> now let's wind back the clock. Right back to 1914, before any of you were born. Before any of you were even thought of. Yes, even you, sir. So, as they say, let the show begin. Should we start with a song? Yeah. Uh, what should we do? How about Johnny Joe? Right, Jones it is then. The centre of world civilization. 
Kultjach. Ouais. La mort. Oh, God, they're at it again. Stop that! They're not doing that. They're eating. How big's your acreage? Six million square kilometres. And yours? Germany. A mere three million square kilometres. But we are a new nation. United only since 1871. When you stole a Sassel Lorraine. Us! German! Hey! We haven't even started to play the game yet. We are more industrious people. We want more sense of world's affairs. I have to keep an eye on you. The second part of the war game is called The Plans. War is unthinkable. It is out of the question. It would mean the ruin of the world, undoubtedly. It would upset the balance of power. And besides, our alliances make us secure. But as you flatten us, then we have the supreme deterrent that you'll not hesitate to use. Shh, that's a secret. The German army will win this battle by an involvement with the right wing. Violate neutrality of Belgium and the Netherlands. World power or downfall. We will take Liège 12 days after mobilization day. Brussels 19 days later. Then, we shall cross the French frontier and we will enter Paris at 11.30 in the morning. And the Russians, they won't be ready till 1916. Time's up. France, admit no law but the offensive. Advance with all forces to attack the German army. France, her bugle sounding. Her soldiers armed for glory. Her will to conquer. In the event of a war, the Royal Navy will keep more than a million Germans busy. We shall disembark on a ten-mile strip of hard sand on the northern shores of Prussia. The overwhelming supremacy of the British Navy is the only thing to keep the Germans out of Paris. Hear, hear. On a point of order, sir, your plans appear to have little in common with those of the army. Look here. You soldiers are a pretty grotesque lot with your absurd ideas about war. Happily, you are powerless. I bet you haven't even got a plan. Well, uh, of course we have. <laughs> yeah, I thought so. Germany since 1871. 
Right, uh, would you just sign this, please, yeah? This war has been coming for a long time. Yeah, I'm glad you think so. Step out onto the pavement. I am a member of the Austro-Hungarian secret police. And I am a member of the Serbian secret police. We liquidated you yesterday. I arrest you for high treason. Uh, what about him? Yeah. We arrest you. But I've said nothing. You said the flies could shyster on the Kaiser. Let's hide, let's hide. This means war. that Germany has ordered Russia to demobilise within 12 hours. The point is, will France remain neutral? Russia is asking for time. Where did you hear that? It's all over town. War's off then? Yes, war is off. Oh, good. Geoffrey, Geoffrey, war is off. All civilian trains cancelled. All civilian trains cancelled. All civilian trains cancelled. All civilian trains cancelled. Until further notice, there'll be no more passenger trains leaving this station. All, all civilian trains cancelled. Cancelled. The world will be engulfed in the most terrible of wars, the ultimate aim of which is the ruin of Germany, England, France, Russia have conspired together for our annihilation. France has mobilized, Your Majesty. The encirclement of Germany is an accomplished fact. We have run our heads into a noose. What about England? They have not yet made up their minds. Abandon the plan. It is too late. The wheels are already in motion. Then send the telegram to my cousin, George V, notifying that my troops are being prevented from telephone and telegram from passing through Belgium. War might burst from a clump of trees, or a meeting of two patrols, a threatening gesture, a black look, a brutal word, a shot. The lamps are going out all over Europe. We shall not see them lit again in our lifetime. Yeah. They've gone into Luxembourg! None of my English, but the two of Germans just went into Luxembourg! And not fire Lieutenant Feldman to withdraw his troops immediately from Luxembourg. No, no! It's a mistake! Advance into Luxembourg! Advance! They've gone on all right! Hey! Why me? We're off! They've gone into Belgium! Hello!
Bonjour, mes amis. Bonjour, mon capitaine. Ah oui, il fait beau pour la chasse, n'est-ce pas Oh, et vive la République En avant Maintenant, mes amis. Ah oui, pour les voir. Charge To serve his dirty trick But naughty knight in the age Quite upset his dirty dick With his luggage labelled England And his programme nicely set He shouted, first stop Paris But he hasn't got there yet For Belgium put the kibosh on the Kaiser Europe took a stick and made it sore On his throne it has to sit And when John will start to hit He will never sit upon it Across the sea they looked a pretty sight But when they heard the bulldog bark They disappeared from sight The Kaiser said be careful If by Jellico they're seen and Then every man of war I've got Will be a submarine We chased his ships to Turkey And the Kaiser started stood Scratched his head and said Don't touch, you see I'm touching wood but Then Turkey brought her warships Just to aid the German plot Be careful, Mr. Turkey, or you'll do the turkey trot. For Belgium put the kibosh on the Kaiser. Europe took a stick and made him sore. And if Turkey makes the stand, she'll get jagged and Japan. And it won't be hot the Kaiser anymore. He'll have to go to school again and learn his geography. He quite forgot Britannia and the hands across the sea. Australia and Canada, the Russian and the Jap. And England looked so small he can see her on the map. While Ireland seemed unsettled, R said he, I'll settle John. But he didn't know the Irish like he knew them later on. But the Kaiser stirred the life. Please excuse him for the crime. His lunatic attendant wasn't with him at the time. Oh, Battlefield is unbelievable. Heaps of corpses, French and German, lying everywhere. Thousands of dead, lying in rows on top of each other. The guns recall at each shot. Night is falling, and they look like old men sticking out their tongues and spitting fire. Shells are bursting and screaming. Whenever it stops, we hear the wounded men crying from all over the woods. Two or three men go mad every day. Nothing more terrible could be imagined. We advanced much too fast. The men are desperately tired. I feel a great pity for many of the civilian population who have lost everything, but they hate us. One of them fired at us. He was immediately taken out and shot. Yesterday, we were ordered to attack an enemy flank in a forest of beaches, but the enemy gunners saw us and opened fire. The men were done for. Shells fell like hail. Oh, it's time to move the way. 
waves, not lightning, while we had Jack upon the sea and Tommy on the land, we need a fret. It's a long, long way to Tipperary, but we're not down Where's your bayonet gone then? <laughs> Standing on parade. Like some fancy fairy! Pick it up! Bayonet! Fix! Come here, push me out of the lunch! When you leave the lunch, when you're being right away, never mind, so fall flat on your ass. And every day because of what you guys say, looking straight in the ass, because he's also joined the bloody army. And every day you guys like a swing at him like that, looking him straight in the balls, and burn his chances! Lunch position! Charge! Dress, get back, dress back! You again. You think you're bloody smart, you do. You think you're bloody clever, you do! I've been in the army for 25 bloody years. And I've got three bloody stripes to prove it! I suppose you went to public school. You don't go forward with all these lardy dars and tally hoes. You go forward like this. Ah! Now do it again! That me! Do it again! I have your worst bloody nightmare! Get back into a low position! Get those faces on you. My God. Look at those bastards. Up your mother. Up your sister. Up your brother by the looks of Stubby up! Charge! Get back here you crazy sex maiden! Your life will not be worth living what I've done with you! Sorry madam. We're only doing a bit of bayonet practice. Pray! Pray! Just! Left! Turn! Quick! March! Left! Right! Left! Right! Left! Right, left, 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 right. The Army and the Navy 
in need of attention. The outlook is a Chelsea, you'll admit. But I've got a perfect dream of a new recruiting scheme, which I think is absolutely it. If only other girls would do as I do, I believe that we could manage it alone. For I turn all suitors from me, but the sailor and the Tommy have an army and a navy of my own. On Sunday I walk out with a soldier, on Monday I'm taken by a tar. On Tuesday I'm out with a baby boy scout, on Wednesday a hussar. On Thursday I gang out with a Scotty, on Friday the captain of the crew. Shilling to make a man of any one of you. I teach the tender foot to face the powder that gives an added luster to my skin, and I show the raw recruit how to give a chase salute. So when I'm presenting arms, he's falling in. It makes you almost, almost proud to be a woman, to make a strapping soldier of a kid. And he says you put me through it, and I didn't want to do it. But you went and made me love you, so I did. On Sunday, I walk out with a bursar. On Monday, a rifleman in green. On Tuesday, I choose a sub in the blues On Wednesday a Marie On Thursday a terrier from Tooting On Friday a midshipman or two But on Saturday I'm willing If you'll only take a shilling To make a man of any one of you Come on boys We need a million A million Be a man Enlist today. Enlist today. Have you a man digging your garden when he should be digging trenches? He should be digging trenches. Have we any able-bodied men in the house? Well, have we? But on Saturday I'm going, if you'll only take a shilling, to make a man of any one of you. come from? Yes, sir. Tradesmen, mostly. Shan't understand a damn word they say. Um, sir, with regard to that, don't you think we need an interpreter? Don't be ridiculous, Wilson. The most essential problem at the moment is the utmost secrecy. Oh, my dear chap, how simply splendid to see you again. Enchanté, mon général. Yes. May I present Field Marshal Sir John French, Commander-in-Chief of the British Expeditionary Force. <clears throat> Bienvenue, Monsieur. How do you do, sir? May I present General de Moranville, Commander-in-Chief of the Belgian Forces. Belgian? Splendid! Gallant little Belgian, what? Oui, mais malheureusement, comme d'habitude, vous êtes en retard. Vous avez l'heure. What? You are here, mon général, and not a moment too soon. Damn it all! I came as quickly as I could. You have damn bad roads in France. Intéressant. Road. Road, he said. Oui, c'est la route maintenant. OK, des excuses, toujours des excuses. Et si je le fais? Si la France est perdue, c'est à cause de vous. Tu sais où vous étiez. Tu sais. I really think we need a translator. 
Don't be ridiculous, Wilson. I can handle this perfectly well on my own. <clears throat> Mon général, promenade, s'il vous plaît. Ah, on parle français maintenant. Yes, oui, yes. <clears throat> Mon général, les Allemands. Ah oui, les Allemands, je vous écoute, mon général. Yes, uh, les Allemands traversent. What's cross the river, Wilson? Traverser le fleuve. Of, of course, yes, I knew that, I knew that. <clears throat> les Allemands traversent la fleuve ici, à Hoy, à Hoy. Ah oui, ah oui. Yes. Ahoy! No, 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 no. Ahoy. Yes, yes! Ahoy! Ahoy. Ah, U, Y. What? No, eh? no. What, what, what? No, 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 no. Pardonnez-moi, monsieur. Le Allemand traversait le fleuve. Ahoy. N'est-ce pas? Oui, mais peut-être pour aller à la pêche. My general thinks, monsieur, that the Germans have come to the river to fish. <laughs> Fish. <laughs> They've come to the river to fish, sir. Um, sir, I think he means the Germans will probably cross the river here at the bridge. Ah, yes, of course. In that case, gentlemen, we shall hold one division, un division, guarding the bridge, la pont, la. And another division will be held in reserve by the clump of trees, le clump of trees here and the French cavalry will govern the sector from there to there. La? A la. Très bien. Le cavalry français doit pas le fuir comme d'habitude. Non, ce n'est pas possible. Je n'accepte pas. Vous êtes en guerre, monsieur. Les Anglais sont en guerre, non? But we only have four divisions, not the six promised by Kitchener. So one cavalry must be kept in reserve. Et le BOF? Où se trouve le BOF? When may we expect the BOF to come into action, Monsieur? Le BOF, le British Expeditionary Force. All in good time, old chaps. All in good time. Mais quand? As soon as possible, the 24th. Le 24th, Monsieur. Et les Allemands, ils vont notre honte jusqu'à la moment le dernier bout de notre réveil. Ah bah! May I remind both gentlemen that my country has already fallen, and so far to help us, we have received a visit from one staff officer to observe decisive action by Britain and France while my troops were holding Liège, and the war would have been over by now. Adieu, gentlemen. Whatever our chaps can do, they will do. Which reminds me, I have been honoured by His Majesty the King to present you with this medal. Vive la France! Lads, keep moving. Mind your crotch. No flag, Sarge. No. What are they, boys? Can you smell it? Come on, get yourselves in a straight line. Eyes front. They can't do that, can they, Sarge? They can't do that. Oh, 
Sam has got any. Ambulances are ready, Sarge. Officers only. What about the other ranks? No arrangements made for them at the moment. Thank you. Excuse me, sir. If you care to step this way, we have transport laid on for you. Thank you, Sergeant. Nearly home, George. Sir, sir, Higgins, sir, B Company, sir. Hello, Higgins. Betting up the old salient, eh, sir? Indeed, yes. Good journey home. Yes, thank you, sir. Chin up then. See you back at the front. Yes, sir. That's enough, cut it out. What about a train back then, Sarge? Oh, you'll get that soon enough. All arranged, Sarge. Some lorry drivers outside have volunteered to take the men to Millbank Hospital in their dinner hour. Thanks. Right, boys. Get yourselves in a straight line. Come on. Keep smiling. You're out the war now. Don't worry, we'll have you back in the firing line within a week. Pack up your troubles in your old kit bag and smile, smile, smile. What's he doing? Ha <laughs> ha! Right into his lady love. <laughs> Lying, not again. My dearest, I waited for you for two hours last night by Elfire Corner. Oh, but, but you didn't turn up. Oh, could it be you no longer love me? Signed, Ari Lips. <laughs> <laughs> What's she like? I bet she's got a nose like a five inch shell. Oh, shut up, Kanye. I'm trying to concentrate. You right for that paper again? Yeah. You don't seem to realise that you're in at the birth of the wifest time. <laughs> Do you want to hear what I've written? No. Do you want to hear it? Yeah, go on then. The wifest times. Agony column. Do you think the war will be over by springtime? Have you got faith in our generals? If the answer to any of these questions is yes, then you are suffering from that dread disease. Optimism. <laughs> <laughs> and she takes seven days leave immediately. Not a bad idea, that paper. Yeah, put one in for me. I mean, now the winter night's coming in. Wanted. Cure for trench foot. <laughs> and corns. Yeah, and chill blades. And how about some letters and all? Yeah, put that in. Or how about some Christmas parcels? Put that in as well. What's up with you? You got company? Yeah, life. Shh, shh. Listen. Yeah, copping it down Railway Wood tonight. No, that's till 60. No, not that. What is it? Singing. Ah, it's probably those Welsh bastards in the next trench. No, that, that's Jerry. It's him. It's a cow. Wouldn't have thought they had them. It's Jerry, all right? He's coming from over there. He sings well for a bastard, don't he? <laughs> Sing up, Jerry! Let's hear I'll you! Put a sock in it. <clears throat> nice, wasn't it? Good on you, mate! Hello, Tommy! Hey. Hello, that? Tommy! We get! What? How are you? I am very well, thank you. Good night. That's another day gone then. <laughs> hey, Tommy, how is it with you? Very yeah, well, thank you. All right. Guten singing, Jerry. Yeah, you got any more? For Helik Weinachten. What? Huh? Happy Christmas. Oh, oh, happy yeah. Christmas. Hey, it's Christmas. Christmas. I forgot it was Christmas. Hey, Tommy, 
It is for you now to sing us a good song for Christmas, oh, yeah? Let's give him one then. Go on then. Hey, I can't sing. We know that. <laughs> Who's gonna sing it then? Give him that one of yours. What? Cookout. Yeah! yeah. Go on. Alright then. Get down your dugout, Jerry. This one's coming over. It was Christmas down the cookhouse. The happiest day of the year. Men's hearts are full of gladness and their bellies full of beer. When up spoke Private Shorthouse, his face as bold as brass, saying, We don't want your Christmas pudding. You can stick it up your tie. Tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. It was Christmas day in the Arum, the eunuchs were standing round when hundred beautiful women were laid out on the ground when in came Big Bad Sultan and gazed upon his marble halls saying, what do you want for Christmas boys? And the eunuchs answered, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy, oh tidings of comfort and joy. <laughs> Bravo Tommy, English Carol is very beautiful. <laughs> Hey Tommy, present for you coming over! Oh, get out! Get out! Get out! What the hell is it? It's a boot! It's a jerry boot. <laughs> What's that sticking out of it? It's a bit of fur tree. On a bit of ribbon? Hudson Fox! <laughs> oh. What's that? Well, that's chocolate, that is. Is it? Yeah. Cheers, Jerry! Oh, that's German sausage, that is. Is it? Yeah. Well, you can have that, cheese. <laughs> hey, we'll have to send him something back, won't we? Yeah. Get your parcels open. Hey, what's oh, the other one? Well, I haven't got one, have I? Here. Oh. They can have my Christmas card from Princess Mary. Ah, tell you what they can have. They can have the old girl's Christmas pudding. Oh, yeah. Bet never tasted anything like that before. Yeah, they yeah. are. I've been saving this. It's my tin of cocoa. Or it might help him sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Here, Jerry, here's your Christmas box. Thanks, Tommy. Jesus. Girl's pudding wasn't that bad. Hey, Tommy, are you still there? Just Not there. Bad. Yes. Many greetings to you for your many presents and kindness. We thank you. You're very welcome, no, mate. That's all right, mate. Hey, Tommy, you like to drink with us? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You like schnapps? Good Deutsche schnapps? Yeah. What about whiskey? Oh, oh yeah. I see you over, mate. We meet you. We meet you in the middle. What? <laughs> middle of Piccadilly? <laughs> yeah. See you in the penalty area. Good night, Jerry. Yeah. And a happy new year, mate. They're marvellous linguists, you know. Yeah. yeah, they learn it at school. I reckon I'm going to write about this in the paper. <laughs> what? All about what Jerry said in us a present. Oh. Hey! Hey! Hello, Tommy. Alles gut. Ja. Thanks very much. Bitte, schon. Hello. How are you? Merry, Merry Christmas. Should have come over sooner. Oh, well, we're starting the crows. Here is them saying goodnight. Don't cry, don't sigh, there's
there's a silver lining in the sky. Bonsoir, old thing, cheerio, chin chin, napo, toodaloo, goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye. Wipe the tear, baby, tear from your eye. Though it's hard to part, I know I'll be tickled to death to go. Don't cry, don't sigh. That's what I always say. 
It's a beautiful day for a shoot, sir. Session. Session. Shall I call them into the guns now, your lordship? Do that for me, Ewan. Shimmy them along now, Ewan. Coming over now, sir. A wonderful year, Bertie. Highly successful. <laughs> oh, that is another one for me. That's a duck, not a grouse. Well, I shoot anything. So I'd noticed. Do you realise that there have been two tea scares in the last year? Our shares dropped by 40%. If the US enters the war, that might just finish it. Now, now, that is very <coughs> dangerous talk. What about the peace scares in France, Count? Caused quite a full order on Wall Street, I can tell you. <coughs> have you scotched it? We flooded our papers with talk of defeatism and shots. Every pacifist we could find. Oh, good. <clears throat> How do you think the war's progressing, sir? Hey, not too badly. Everything's under control. Do you think we'll have peace by Christmas? Peace? 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 Then on earth did you get that story? War to the finish. Absolutely. You must understand, my dear fellow, the war is a political and economic necessity. Yes, sir. We've six of the family at the front, sir. Well, keeps them off the streets now, doesn't it? That's what my mother says. She's very proud of them. Makes men of them. Let's drink a toast. President Wilson. President Poincaré. The King. The Kaiser. You're smart, Count. Didn't you get a consignment of barbed wire from Germany through for Verdun only two months before the battle? You mean the German chappies got caught on their own barbed wire? Ha! <laughs> I say, that's a bit near the knuckle. Dash clever, though. I, uh, promised some of the guys back home I'd give out some of their handouts. Hmm. Bethlehem Steel, furnished arms for every quarter of the globe. Cleveland Automatic Machine Company. Not for me. We're neutral. Fires non-stop for 50 hours. Ah, the shrapnel making machines. You use acids to kill men? Four hours it takes. Very effective. Well, if it's all the same to you, old boy, we'll stick to the dear old Enfield rifles. They're so cheap and easy to make. What about gas? We use fasting gas. Cylinders 1.4 meters long. Highly portable in the trenches. We've got 63 new poison gases and eight more already. We think the old chlorine's pretty oh, good. Haig's trying it out at the moment at Luz. Mind you, we haven't heard from him yet. Gas last night and gas the night before. Gonna get gas tonight if we never get gas anymore. When we're gassed. We're sick as we can be, cos phosgene and mustard gas is much too much for me. They're warning us, they're warning us. One respirator for the four of us. Thank you, lucky stars, the three of us can run, so one of us can use it all alone. Bomb last night and bomb the night before. Gonna get bombed tonight if we never get bombed anymore. When we're bombed, we're scared as we can be. God strafe the bombing place from higher Germany. They're over us, they're over us. One shell hole for just the four of us. Thank you, lucky stars, there are no more of us. Cos one of us could feel it all alone. Get this barricade up quickly. And keep your heads down. Have you the trench consolidated, Sergeant? All present and correct, sir. The CEO is going to have a word with the men. Right. Let's... Attention! Can you stand the men at ease, Sergeant? Come on, lads. On your feet. Oh, come on. Jump to it. Let them smoke if they want to. The CEO says you can smoke. But don't. Let me. Catch you. Now, you men, I've just come from having a powwow with the Colonel. We think you've done some damn fine work. We congratulate you. Thank you, sir. I know you've had it pretty tough the last few days, 
bombs, shells and snipers. We haven't escaped scot-free at the staff either, I can tell you. Anyway, we're all here. Well, not all of us. And that gas of ours was pretty nasty. Damn wind-changing. Indeed, sir. But these mishaps do happen, and gas can be a war-winning weapon. Anyway, so long as we can all keep smiling. Sector all tidy now, Lieutenant. Well, we've buried most of the second Yorks and Lanks, sir. There's a few DLIs at the moment from our own company left. I see. Well, let the lads drum up some ch- <laughs> God! You have no stretcher bearers over there? I'm afraid they went in the last attack, sir. I'm waiting for relief from HQ. Oh, well. They're stout chaps. I think you'd better let the men keep under cover. Thank you, sir. Off you go, boys. Damn place still reeks of decomposing bodies. I'm afraid it's unavoidable, sir. The trench was mainly full of jerrys. Yes. You were more or less sharing the same front line for a few days, weren't you? Yes, sir. I see. Well, carry on. Thank you, sir. Ye gods! What on earth is that? Oh, it's a leg, sir. What? It's a jerry leg, sir? Well, get rid of it, man! You can't have an obstruction sticking out of the parapet like that. Hardcastle. Remove the offending limb. We can't do that, sir. We're holding up the parapet. We've only just consolidated the position. We'll get a shovel and hack it off. And then dismiss the men. Right, sir. What the bloody hell will I have my equipment on? Heads. Trunks. Blood. All over the place. And all he's worried about is a damn leg. Hush. Here comes a whiz bang. Hush. Here comes a whiz bang. Now you soldier men get down those stairs. Down in your dark house and say your prayers. Hush. Here comes a whiz bang and it's making straight for you. And you'll see all the wonders of no man's land if a whiz bang hits you. Germany has shot her bolt. The prospects for 1916 are excellent. Permission to speak, sir? Of course. If we continue in this way, the line of trenches will stretch from Switzerland to the sea. Neither we nor the Germans will be able to break through. The war will end in complete stalemate. Nonsense! We need only one more big offensive to break through and win. Besides, my men are specially trained for this type of war. This is not war, sir. It is slaughter. God is with us. It is for king and empire. Sir, we are sacrificing lives at the rate of five to sometimes 50,000 a day. One battle. Our superior morale. Bombardment will win the day. Sir. Tell us what to do, and we'll do it. We are going to walk through the enemy lines. Complete victory. Destruction of German militarism. Victory march on Berlin. Slow. Deliberate fire on the enemy's position. My men dressed in full pack from left to right. The men are, men are under orders of pain of court martial to take cover in any shell hole or dugout. Our superior morale will cause the enemy to flee in confusion. And the attack will be driven home with the bayonet. This is most unsatisfactory.
factory. Wherever East showers. Wherever East Lanks on the right. Out in no man's uh, land, sir. They are sluggish from too much sitting in the trenches. Most of them will never rise again. We must break through. Regardless of loss, sir. The loss of, say, another 300,000 men may lead to really great results. Well, you see, we are rather short of men, sir. What's left? The new chap is from Ireland who just arrived. Ha! <laughs> rather wild, untrained lot. Still, they'll be ready to have a crack at the Bosch. And what they lack for in training, they'll make up for in gallantry. But, sir, they've just got off the train. Most of them haven't eaten for 48 hours. They are moving against a weakened and demoralized enemy. Capture the German line without any further delay. About nine, I reckon. No, ten! Make it around dozen and we'll all be mentioned in dispatches. We'll be here on Sarge. Oh, sure. It's everyone for the Irish Fusiliers. <laughs> what, what was that, Sarge? What's what? Sounds like someone's talking over there. Look. It's so good I be wounded in that shell all over there. Where? Look. Under that bridge. <laughs> You can't tell the living from the dead, can you? They must have fallen in the last attack. What should they blabbering on about? <clears throat> Go back. Go back. Ya bloody fools. He's telling us to go back. Oh, thanks, Bush! Jesus, that's easier said than done. You what? He says we're drawing their fire. How to get that flag down? Trying to get that bloody flag down. Where did the last one come from, Sarge? I think it must be one of our boys. Don't no, 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 no. Tell artillery not to waste themselves on horse, but to save them for Jerry. And tell them to raise their bloody sights a bit. Back to the bats. Yeah? Oh, no. oh. It's hard to keep ground and we've got so near our goal. No, I get that. You want me to tell them we won? Yeah, you do that. Hey, Sarge, that last one's on the bridge. That means we're cut off. No. Or some for it. Give yourself a treat. Well, that'll be the first bar you've had this year. <laughs> Hey, Seamus, bring us back a bottle of whiskey. Irish. He's gone on to search. What do you mean? I've got him. Right. Well, who's next? Oh, come on. Someone's got to go. I wouldn't buy a swim, Sarge. Off you go then. Tell them there's hundreds of us stranded here. Watch yourself, Jack. Good luck. Just watch me do the 200 yards in 20 seconds. That's the spirit. Get yourself a medal. Well, if he's got shot, I'll bloody kill him. He has Sarge. Right. Well, we reckon we'd all better stick together. They start to tell him the next attack. Who? Oh, the bloody man English. Come on, 
Let's get the hell out of here. Where shall we go? Oh, God only knows. Don't you! attack, then advance onto Belgium to the Channel ports. It is our duty to attack the enemy until his last resources are exhausted and his line breaks. Then, 
in Mugal cavalry and annihilate him. Hey, Beth. Yeah? Guess what they're doing now. No, what? Melting corpses for glycerine. Get away. Hey. The Germans, it's in this morning's paper. Emma, Emma. Yeah? Weißt du, was sie jetzt tun? Nein, was? Sie schmelzen Körper für Glycerin. Wie klingt wer? Die Engländer. Es war in der Zeitung heute Morgen. Guess what else? They say there's another big push coming. Oh, God, no. Emma, man sagt, noch ein anderes kommt. Sagst du? Mein Gott. Yeah. On the way up to Vimy. We've got there by you. There's a shortage. What up? Ammunition? No. Coffins. All right. Form fours. Rum ration. If you want the old battalion, we know where they are. We know where they are. We know where they are. If you want the old battalion, we know where they are. They're hanging on the old barbed wire. We've seen them, we've seen them hanging on the old barbed wire. We've seen them, we've seen them hanging on the old barbed wire. The losses were very heavy last night, sir. The Canadian Corps had severe casualties. The 13th London were isolated and completely wiped out. There must be no squeamishness over losses. Give orders to advance immediately. Right. Here we go, boys! Blimey! Jerry's doing well! What, all them little yellow flags out there? They give them to our blokes. What for? So they know where we was. Did you say our blokes? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I get it. So our guns don't get us before Jerry does. Just stick with me, lads. I'll see you through this lot. Heads down and keep spreading well out. Blimey! You're still here? Yeah. Why? Oh, I drew you in the sweet state. Every man for himself. Every man for himself. We'll see you off to the war, Sarge. Yeah, in the red line. Eight o'clock. Make it half past. Eight. Or well, I might be a bit then. Permission to speak, sir. I have been wondering, or rather the staff and I have been wondering, perhaps this policy of attrition might be a mistake. Nonsense. We must grind them down. You see, our population is greater than theirs, and their losses are greater than ours. I don't quite follow that, sir. You see, in Vienna, they should have 5,000 men left, and we shall have 10,000 men left, <laughs> and we shall have one. In any case, I intend to launch one more form scale offensive to break through and win. I say, sir. Did you know the average life of the young subaltern on the front has now increased to three weeks? Yes, sir. The replacement's coming in by the thousands. It's marvellous. You see? The star for in complete agreement. Let us pray.
beloved brethren, I'm sure you will be glad to hear the news from the home front. The Archbishop of Canterbury has made it known that labour for war on the Sabbath is no longer a sin. And I'm sure you will also be glad to hear that the Chief Rabbi has absolved your Jewish brethren from abstaining from pork in the trenches. And likewise, His Holiness the Pope has made the eating of flesh on a Friday no longer a venial sin. I wish we had an Irish Pope. It's all right. Now, brethren, tomorrow being Good Friday, we pray that God will look kindly upon our attack on Arras. Amen. The choir will now sing, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, as we will offer a silent prayer for Sir Douglas Haig and his success in tomorrow's battle. <laughs> servant depart in peace according to thy word. Dismiss. Come on you men. Fall in. Good. Squatch it. Left hand. Quick. Well, God, the prospects for a successful attack tomorrow are now ideal. I place myself in thy hands. Into thy hands I commend my spirit. The fields are full of tents, O Lord. Every ward has been cleared to make way for the wounded that will be arriving when the big push comes. Let us win this battle, Lord, before the Americans arrive. Doctors say there will be enormous numbers of dead and wounded, God. Grant us fair weather for tomorrow's attack, Lord, so that we may drive the enemy into the sea. O oh Lord, we beg you, do not let this dreadful war cause all the suffering that we have prepared for. I know you will answer our prayer. <laughs> The attack has been a great success. Fighting has been severe, but that was to be expected. The ground is thick with enemy debt. First reports from the clearing station state that our casualties are only some of 60,000. <laughs> Mostly slight. The wounded are very cheery indeed. The 
going to have to start burning the bodies instead of burying them. Yes, it's such an unpleasant duty now. The men always try to get out of it. Well, it'll make a good farming country in the years to come. If there's any of us left to see it. Come on, you men. I want this trench clear in half an hour. Get stuck in. Oh, come on. Jump to it. Water and mud are becoming increasing and horrible. The longer days when they arrive will be most welcome. <laughs> Especially to the officers. The other ranks don't seem to mind so much. Here, what ever happened to old Fred? I don't know. Haven't seen him since his last cry for help. That's right. He got sucked under. Oh, oh no, he, he went sick. Don't be daft. You can't go sick here. You're gonna lose your lungs, your liver, your life. Watch it. Everything points to complete breakdown in enemy morale. Now is the time to hit them firmly and resolutely. I hear the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister has been questioning my tactics. I cannot believe a British Minister would be so ungentlemanly. Big push coming. That's what I heard too. Of course, you work in munitions, don't you? Yeah, we're the first to hear about these things. Get well paid too, don't you? Yeah, one girl in my department earned three pounds last week. Get away! I wouldn't like to work down there though. <sighs> yeah, it can be dangerous and all. Just last week we had an explosion and one of the girls got blown to smithereens. We're on overtime, you know. Of course, you work on cotton, don't you? Yeah, and we've got some funny stuff going on this week. They say it's for shrouds, for corpses. Well, that makes you shiver, doesn't it? Gives me the willies. I'd rather be on munitions. Here. What's that then? Here's a brass bag. Hey, it's the Aussie. Up the Anzac. Don't they look brown? They're an handsome lot. Good looking fellas. Excellent. I believe this year we'll see 
die Final Victory. Sieg für Deutschland. Er pour la France. Er la croix. Er la victoire. Gott mit uns. And with ours, old boy. If we carry on this campaign the way we are going, we'll sew the entire thing up by 1918. 1920. 1920. 30, 35. 40, 45. 50, 55. Any advances on 65? Got plenty more numbers where that came from. Alors, again for the glory of France. Prepare for the attack. En avant! En avant! Are you deaf? No, mon capitaine. What is this? A mutiny? We think it is stupid to go into the trenches again. You don't think! You obey! If you refuse, you will be shot. Very well. We follow you, like lambs to the slaughter. Bon. Like lambs to the slaughter. Pour la gloire de la France, en avant! Bah. <laughs> Vive la République! En avant shot away I'd rather stay in England in merry merry England and fornicate my bleeding life away 